This video is going to show you how to fit a sine curve to a set of data by hand. So we're going to start with our data table here and you can see that it's the temperature in Denver, Colorado and it's the average monthly temperature over one year. Notice that I let the x value of 1 be January which makes 12 be December. Now on my graph you can see that I went ahead and I graphed this data and you can see I actually graphed it twice so I graphed two periods of it meaning I just repeated the same data a second time then I went on to x equals 13 14 and so on and I just graphed two sets of this data the reason I did this is I really want to see a nice picture of what this data looks like over time and just 12 points isn't going to give me a good enough idea now x equals 1 is January notice very carefully that on the x-axis I scaled in terms of numbers not the months and it's really important that you do that and also that you label your x-axis so I know what does x equals 1 stand for x equals 0 so on alright so now we're going to talk about step 3 in our essential standard and basically what we're going to do right now is we are going to take that data that we have and we're going to find a sine or cosine graph to fit the data so that's going to be our first step now in order to do that <coughs> we're going to need to find the amplitude the period the shift and all the other information so let's go ahead and take a look the first thing i'm going to find is the amplitude now remember for the amplitude it's half the distance from your um, from your smallest to your lowest point or from your center line up or down now to find that i'm going to take the highest point on the graph and subtract the smallest point on the graph and then I'm going to divide that by 2 because remember I just want half that distance. So my highest point looking at my data table was 73.5. My lowest point was 29.7, so I'm going to subtract those. And when I divide those by 2, you can see I get 21.9. So that's going to be my amplitude, 21.9. Now we're going to find the period. Now to decide the period, we really have to look at how long does it take for this graph to start repeating. So I'm just going to look at one point on the graph, and then the next point that's exactly the same. So this, for example, would be one cycle of cosine. Now, that doesn't mean I have to write a cosine equation. I'm just using this to help me decide how long it takes for the graph to start repeating itself. Now that first point is at 1, x equals 1. The same point, a whole cosine graph later, is at x equals 13. That means that in between those, 13 minus 1, I have a total of 12 units. So my period in this case is 12. Now, some of you might have already thought that was going to be the case because of the 12 months. But remember, depending on where you are, your temperature might start repeating um, sooner than 12 months. In this case, it really took 12 months before we're going to start that whole cycle all over again. It's important to remember that the 12 is not what's going to go into our equation. We're going to have to solve for the b value. Remember that the period equals 2 pi over b. So I'm going to say 2 pi over b equals 12, because that's my period. Now I'm going to solve for that b value. And that's because the b value is what I need to put into the equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by b, and then divide by 12. And if I simplify that fraction, you can see I'm going to get my b value to be pi over 6. Now if you wanted, you could also put that into a decimal equivalent, 0.5236, and you could use either one in your equation. Now that I have my amplitude and my period, let's talk about the shifting. Now first to decide the vertical shift, I need to find the center line of this graph. So let's go ahead and look at my graph, and I think the center line is going to be right in between, right there in the middle. Now you'll notice that's in the middle of the highest and lowest points. It's the average of the highest and lowest y values. So I'm going to take my y values, my lowest 13.5, and my highest 29.7, and divide them by 2. When I do that, I get the average, the middle, which is 51.6. And you can see that pretty much matches that line I found right there, just above 50. So that means my shift is going to be up 51.6 units. To determine the horizontal shift, I'm going to need to decide where I want my starting point to be. Now, I'm going to write a positive sine graph, so I'm going to pick my starting point to be right there where I circled on the graph. 
You could also do a cosine equation, and then you'd have a different starting point. Your starting point would be x equals 1. Um, you could do a negative sine equation, and then you would be starting at 10. So it all depends on what you want to use as your start point and what kind of equation you want to write. So I'm going to say my graph is moving right 5 units because I want to write a positive sine equation. Now that I know my shift right and my shift up, I have everything I need to put this all together to write my final equation, which ends up being y equals 21.9 times the sine of pi over 6 times x minus 5 plus 51.6. And you can see I just put everything together we just found to get that final equation. Now, once you have this equation, if we continue to look at the rest of what we want to do in part three, we're then supposed to describe in writing how we found it. So make sure you go through your steps and describe in writing how you did it. And also what modifications you had to make. Now what I mean by that is you might get your final equation and you might see that it doesn't really match your graph because you might have some outlier points. So you might have to ignore some outlier points or change a few things so that it matches your graph better. If you have to make those changes, those will be modifications you made, and you'd want to just make sure that you stated that you made those modifications and why you made them. The final part in step three is now to put this curve on our graph, on the same graph as our data points. So notice we only have one graph happening right now. I'm going to go to that same graph that I've had, and now we're going to go ahead and graph this equation that we found. Remember, to graph this, we need to start first with the shift up. So I'm going to go to 51.6, and I'm going to just draw that imaginary x-axis. The next thing will be to plot our first point, which is right, 5 units. So I'm going to go to right, 5 units, and put a dot. Now I need the last point. Remember, to find the last point, we're going to take the first point, 5, and we're going to add the period to it, pi over 6. I'm sorry, 12. And when I do that, I get 17. So now, I'm going to go to 17 and put my next dot, my last dot. I'm going to find the middle of those. Now the middle is the average. So I'm going to add 5 and 17 together and divide them by 2. And when I do that, I get my middle to be 11. So at 11, I'm going to put another x-intercept. I'm going to need to find the middle of 5 and 11, so I'm going to add 5 and 11 and divide by 2, and I'm going to get an x value of 8. Now to find the y value, I'm going to take the center line, that 51.6, and add the amplitude to it, 21.9. And when I do that, I'm going to find that highest point on my graph, which ends up being 73.5, and so we'll go ahead and plot that point. I'll have to do the same thing on the other side. So between 11 and 17, the middle there is going to be at 14. But this time I'm going to take my shift 51.6 and subtract my amplitude 21.9. And you can see that that lowest point is at 29.7. I can put that on the graph. And now I have everything I need to sketch that equation. And that's the end of part three for your standard. So you'll have a graph with your data points. You'll have your equation that you found, a description in writing as to how you found that equation. And finally, you're going to graph that equation onto your graph using your five-point method. And that's the end for today.